Good morning. It's November 4th, I think. Saturday. I'm driving through, uh, I think it's like the very southeast corner of Montana. It's uh, about all you see for miles and miles and hours and hours. I just stopped at a tiny gas station in a tiny town because it was like you just never know when the next gas station is going to be. Unfortunately, they only had unleaded gas, and which means my car. Oh, there's the Wyoming sign. Dang, should have recorded that. So just pass into Wyoming. I guess I'll be in the corner here, and then I'll uh, scoot into South Dakota. But yeah, so my car is going to start smelling like rotten eggs because they didn't have the higher quality gas. So that's something that I did not think about when purchasing this vehicle. And yeah, I mean literally like I woke up this morning and tomorrow is daylight savings time. So it was really dark. I was said I would leave at first light and I was up at seven and was not light out. And I was worried that the roads might still be icy because it was precipitating last night. So fortunately now it's a uh, well above freezing. It's in the upper thirties, but that wind outside is freezing. Uh, feels like it. So Waka, I didn't have, couldn't find a seatbelt this morning, so I was a little nervous, but I found it beneath a bunch of stuff after. So he's all set for his ride. He just got a little breakfast, and uh, yeah, there's no service out here, so I can go live if I wanted to. So I've just been listening to some podcasts, which I had downloaded a few days ago when I had Wi-Fi. So yeah, it's going well. It's interesting. Uh, basically, I'm learning about traveling out here, that uh, at least when you're going from these rural places, like this is what the road looks like for just hours and hours and hours. So there's really nothing. And uh, when it does start snowing more regularly, like, there's no way I'm driving on this, even if I have a 4x4. I mean, last night was frightening. Uh, so, this might be my first and last trip down to Rapid, which is unfortunate because I was thinking, you know, it's only six hours away, it won't be that big a deal because I imagine, like, driving, you know, from New York to D.C. <laughs> but it's very different because there's no big highways like that out here. And, uh... You know, I went so long last night when I was driving in that snowstorm. I There was no one else on the road. Like, on my side of the road, there was no one. Uh, I think I drove for two hours and there was one truck behind me at the very end. So it's very isolated. So that's, and as I said, there's no service a lot of the area. So it's very nerve wracking, you know, if there were to be any kind of uh, issue with mobility, you know, if I were to slide off the road or something, which last night I felt like was a real possibility. So really grateful I was able to make it to that city. It was kind of the last 20 miles I was white knuckling it on the steering wheel and just breathing and praying. I didn't even want to check how many more miles because I just knew I would see it and eventually I did see lights appear on the horizon and I was like okay I made it. So I uh, stayed in this like sketchy little room last night that the deadbolt wouldn't close, the doorknob lock like struggled to close, uh, the curtains were pretty see-through on the window so and there was a bunch of people there, you know, like when I woke up, there's a bunch of trucks there. So really grateful for this little guy keeping me safe and uh, growling and barking whenever he would hear someone through the walls, just so people knew that he's with me. I'm really, you know, grateful that he's joined my life and that uh, he really provides a level of safety and security. I was talking with a friend of mine who is a guy who's all... Uh, interested in being a survivalist and living outdoors and on the road and it's just interesting you know comparing his process to mine he was like oh yeah I slept under a tarp you know behind a dumpster behind a store and I'm like I would never do that <laughs> because I'm a female and it's just like I would not do that if I could ever help it uh, I would probably you know rather climb a tree or something like than be on the ground it kind of brings up this like biological um, survival mentality in terms of being a, a target and you know out here in oil country a little bit less down in Montana but when I was you know going through North Dakota that's where a lot of indigenous women disappear uh, there's this phenomenon if you haven't been following me you might not have tuned in to the missing and murdered indigenous 
uh, women and relatives tragedy that I guess has always been going on truthfully but uh, continues in large part to this day especially into uh, central Canada as well and some of the reservation communities there but in it's connected as well to the man camps uh, where workers male workers come to work on the pipelines and then all these women start vanishing more often and a huge number of them are killed so I mean even just now like I was at the gas station and I really wanted to bring my dog inside with me because I just didn't want to be known that I'm out here traveling alone as an indigenous descent woman uh, it would be very different, you know, if I were blonde out here in the rancher community where it seems like everyone is white or native, but there's a fair amount of racism, you know, like there's a run for governor right now in Montana that's going to be very close on Tuesday, and one of the guys is in Drum's pocket, you know, he's just like him, that level of racism and so it's, uh, yeah, just a different level of self-awareness that I have to have out here, a new level of street smarts that I am observing myself become aware of. And uh, it'll be better. I'm heading down to Rapid City and obviously in urban areas it'll be fine. And then I'm going to a reservation. So I will then be, you know, one of many uh, brown presenting people. But out here in these like ranch areas, it honestly makes me nervous to see these white men pull up in their big ass pickup trucks and kind of look at me sideways with my plate from the northeast it really actually makes me stand out as an outsider so I that's another thing to consider about you know maybe registering in Montana especially if I do end up upgrading my vehicle that would kind of put me more incognito than being like so blatantly out of my uh home zone, which I've done a lot, but it's, I haven't spent a lot of time out here by myself, so I'm learning. Alright, talk to you later. Got three more hours to drive.